Hello, everybody, and welcome to VFR Today. We are in a piece of aviation history. Um, a new airplane out for Microsoft Flight Simulator by Asobo themselves, the Yunkers, JU-52. This really is one of the classic early prop liners. As you can see, it's got the notable three motors up front, three engines. It's a tri-motor. And um, similar to the Ford Tri-Motor, except they only made 200 or so Ford Tri-Motors and they made thousands of JU-52s. So again, this is really one of those mainline early progenitors of what we have now in commercial aviation. Uh, this airplane really uh, started under service in the 1930s and it served into the 50s in commercial capacities. And because of this airplane's history as a commercial airliner and then it had some wartime service, it's ended up in a lot of really funky places, including Panama Canal Zone, where the U.S. Um, actually entered it into service as the C-79 uh, during World War II. And then it pops up also flying local routes in the United Kingdom after the war, as well as Switzerland and some other countries. Uh, and again, it's a really it's really a, one of the, the, the grandfathers of the, the modern airliner. And I think Asoba's done a really nice job with this model. Obviously, you've got nice stout landing gear, the three motors... Um, you get a few liveries with this as well as a couple different versions. So there's a ski version, there's a float version, and there is also a modern version. I haven't checked out the modern one yet, but I assume it has a Garmin in it. This is the classic 1939 spec that we're going to be flying today. And what we're going to be doing is doing just a quick hop over the Alps from here in northern Italy out to Geneva, Switzerland. So let's hop into the cockpit and get it fired up. All right, so here we are. We are in the JU-52, and this is a really, I think it's a really nice model. I've been playing around with it just a little bit beforehand doing some testing. This is really pretty hot off the presses, uh, but it is a nice model, and it's really, from what I've seen, not dumbed down. So you're going to have plenty of little switches to fiddle with, uh, like the DC-6. Um, that's really kind of the best comparison to it right now. It's like a little bit earlier version of that with three engines instead of four, but you do get some sliding windows, which is always a nice feature, and this sunroof. I tell you what, that's worth the price of admission itself. And the price isn't that steep. $15 for kind of a classic prop liner. I don't think you can go wrong with that. I think um, definitely that's very reasonable. And um, yeah, it's definitely worth taking a look at. I don't, um, I, th I think it's really cool, really cool airplane, especially with all the options you get. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to come over here. I've made some custom views for the console, very similar to how I do it with the DC-6. Uh, but a lot of your controls, for, especially for the engine, are going to be on here. Now, we have the first step in a cold and dark airplane is going to be turn the battery on. You may have to scoot up a little bit. I haven't quite refined it yet. But this battery will go on. You'll see the dials come to life. And then we're going to come over to the far right panel. And we're going to turn this lever, which is the primer, to ALF. And then the uh, injection fuel valve to ALF. Yeah, this, this is your first non-English plane that you're learning. Auf is going to mean on in German. So it's not off, it's on. Uh, but yeah, AUF equals on. Uh, so then, yeah, that'll be a fun... It's not too bad once you get your mind into the right place. Uh, another fun plane thing with these Germanic planes, it's the same in Swedish with the Vigan. Uh, but fart has to do with speed. So auto fart control is speed, autopilot in the Vigan. It's going to be your airspeed indicator over here. So that's fun for us English speakers. Now, engine start has a few moving pieces, but it's mostly pretty simple as long as you have all the directions, dials pointing the right way. Um, the big red button here in the middle, this is your starter master. That's going to be pushed in. And then we're going to go ahead and turn the magnetos to both and open the cap. Uh, green is going to be engine one. I believe red is engine two, or I believe, yeah, I believe red is engine one over here. Green is engine three, and then yellow is going to be engine one, the middle one. So button in, we're going to turn the magnetos to both, pull the green cap, and then we are going to bring the this lever, the fuel cutoff lever, to von hand pump auf. That's going to be right here. That just means that we're going to be um, starting it with this wiggle pump on. So this will start um, in the up position. You're going to have to click on the latch and then pull it down. And now we should be ready to start. Now make sure your mixture is in the down position that is fully open or fully rich. Don't make the mistake of pulling it up or your engine won't start. 
that's uh, fooled me for a few minutes. So you're gonna pull the handle, you're gonna see the dials come to life and then just hold it down and then you're gonna flip that in. If you've gotten it right, it should stabilize around 7,000 RPM. And if you look out the window, we have a spinning prop. Now to do engine one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull that mixture cap. We're gonna move it into magnets into both von hand pump off. And we're gonna get ready to pull. Make sure that's all the way down. Pulling the starter lever. See some gauges come to life and then we're gonna flip that into the lowest position. And that's our second engine. Now for the third engine, we're gonna bring this um, back in. And then we are going to repeat the process. Now the yellow one's hard to get at, but if you just about get underneath it, you can pop it to the left and then pop the yellow cap. We're gonna bring the fuel down and then we're gonna open the cover. It'll go up to that and then we're gonna pull that down and it should stabilize around 7,000 as it rumbles to life. My only complaint right now is the interior sounds, I think. It's just not quite, not quite as visceral as something as the DC-6, which really isn't a fair comparison. So we're going to close up our, our sunroof and get ready to get going. Now, I am not going to be flying completely blind. I'm not worrying about using navigation, nav aids, or anything. Uh, I'm going to pretend that I'm a modern pilot with an iPad and we're gonna have a little nap map up to help navigate. But that's pretty much it. We're gonna go ahead and take the parking brake off. You should just crawl forward on your own. You got a lot of power. Um, and your turning radius is gonna be quite large unless you use your wheel brakes. So if you have rudder pedals with toe brakes, like Warbird, like other Warbirds, that's pretty helpful here. And you may have to get into the takeoff position just to see a little bit better. It is tough. Just gonna check the controls. Now, when you're going hard on the brakes, make sure you're applying back pressure. Otherwise you will flip over because this, uh, this is a tail dragger. So we are looking pretty good here. Windows are closed. This is not really the full checklist, but we're gonna get on the road uh, I'm going to put make sure the mixture is full rich. And then we can bring, I believe, these off. And there will be plenty of time for learning all of that in a bit. But this is really about flying it. So we are going to hold on the brakes. Bring the throttles up to 50% per the checklist. Just going to keep some back pressure on it. We're now I'm going to release the brakes. We'll let it roll. And go full power. And it should just lift right off the ground. I don't have any passengers in here, so it is a very light airplane today. But it should just float you right away. Very nicely, not a lot of drama. We're going to come out of the full power now and just back to like 80%. as we climb on out. And it does have a certain um, floatiness. I don't know if you load it up. That'll be interesting to see. But it, it definitely does have a certain floatiness to it. That would be the best way I would, um, I would describe it. I would describe the DC-6 as very stable, very planted, very intentional. This is very, it almost floats off the runway. It floats around on you. Of course, I can't speak for how realistic or not realistic that is. And it really doesn't matter, but. It is an interesting airplane. And that startup sequence is no, it's no joke. It's not for the, um, not for the faint of heart. So we're gonna climb out here over Northern Italy. We're going to just get some altitude so we can crow, climb over these mountains. And then we will turn over the Alps and head for Geneva. All right, so we're 
climbing out here or uh, passing just about 4,000 meters, which is, for those handy with math, about 12,000 feet. We're at 13,000 feet right now. My judging based on the VFR map, we should be okay at about 15,000. Pretty clear we could probably get by at this altitude too. Um, one thing to think about as you get higher in this airplane, uh, you're going to have to lean out the mixture. It makes quite a big difference. Uh, it's, um, yeah, that's a really, if you're struggling to climb and you haven't touched the mixture, start leaning it out and it'll help, um, it'll help a whole lot once you get up to this altitude. We've got a theoretical ceiling of about 19,000 feet. Well, again, we should only need 15,000. But everything's in meters, so we'll, we'll make that work. Now, this dial is a little bit interesting. It's almost, um, two separate dials for your altimeter. So you see here we've got the four kilometers 4,000 meters and over here it's showing you what um, on the left it's showing you what how, uh, how far into that you've gotten and then once we're up at altitude we should be able to put our foot down a little bit we've been climbing out about 150 knots but we should be able to push to 100 something to 50 at most so we will see <laughs> Alright, so here we are in the cruise. We are about halfway to Switzerland now. We are making a solid 200 kilometers per hour. I got my units mixed up again. I said 200 and 250 knots earlier, and that's a bit optimistic. So, we're getting over these last ridges, and once we get into the valley, once we see Geneva off our nose, we'll probably have to do a little bit of circling and landing. Uh, we're going to have to dump a lot of this altitude to get down to that level. I wonder what Geneva is at. Uh, Geneva is going to be at 4,000 meters, so we don't actually, we won't have that much to get rid of without 1,000 meters, 3,000 feet. So yeah, this is a really, it's a really fun airplane. It really has that old school adventure kind of vibe. I get a lot of Indiana Jones, even though I think in Temple of Doom it's a Ford tri-motor. But it is very much that, that feel. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's a really neat addition to, to the sim. I could see flying us a lot of places. And again, you really, I mean, the mixture controls, I do like it when you actually have to worry about your mixture and your, or all your, those kinds of things to get the best performance in different, uh, different altitudes and different regimes. So that's also a really good thing to, uh, to be able to manage and have an impact on how you're flying it. So there are some things to think about. And uh, again, I think it's, I think it's really cool, really cool addition to the stable. <laughs> Prepping the descent into Geneva now. We're about to clear this last ridge. We'll begin our descent here shortly. We've got the lake off to our right, um, and the airport is going to be right at the tip of the lake, kind of behind that, mm, the second ridge from us. So the lake is an important, um, important reference. We're going to be swinging out to the left as we descend, and we'll just try to loop up the valley and uh, get on the right speed, get configured for landing. Nothing fancy. On landing, we're not using ILS or anything. I have no idea if this airplane can do anything like that or not. So we're going to be doing a good old-fashioned visual landing. And really, it's just going to be flaps full, bringing the speed all down as far as a dare, and uh, just trying not to get a prop strike, trying to keep the tail wheel on the deck. So we will see. We're going to put it into a descent and get on down to Geneva. Thank you. 
We're down here now at a thousand meters or so. And we are going to be coming up on Geneva very shortly now. Uh, we're leveling off. I'm going to give it a little bit more power. We're going to bleed off some of that speed. We're up about 210 kilometers per hour, so 140 plus knots. And we're just going to bring that down pretty gently. Now, I am completely cheating. I'm using a little nav map again. Like, this is a modern flight, and I'm looking at my iPad. But Geneva is going to be off to our right side. It's just one runway right out there. And there should not be too much drama about it. Um, we're not as heavy or as fast as the DC-6, so we can slow down a lot easier. And we're not that fast to begin with. So once we get into Final Approach, we're going to keep it below 150 knots. And then just bleed off as much speed as we can on Final. Nice thing is our gear's already down, so we're not worrying about anything like that. We're going to give it full flaps. And then we're going to just get the wheels to touch. And then slowly bring the rear wheel down before we apply any brakes. If we apply the brakes too hard, it's just going to smash our nose into the ground. Got the field off our nose, and I'm just going to add a little power to maintain our altitude. And much like takeoff, when landing, it can be quite floaty. So we'll just have to make sure that we're holding it on the ground. We should have plenty of runway. We just have to make sure we're planted. And I probably underestimate how light this airplane is. Coming from the DC-6, which is heavy and mean and a real high performance. I mean, this is what, I mean, the DC-6 is what something like this is building towards. But it's not quite there yet. So these are very light aircraft, relatively. So it makes some sense that it would be a little bit floaty. And keep an eye on our altitude. The field is at 1,400 feet. So a third of a kilometer, 0.4 kilometers. So that's what we're going to be keeping our eye on. For this, I'm just going to bump myself up a little bit. We'll keep letting the speed come off. As we make our way down to the runway. So I'm going to give it one knock of flaps. So I've got, we're looking a little high. And when you come back down, make sure you're going full rich. Now that we're down towards the ground, I'm gonna give it another knock of flaps. We'll 
just keep an eye on that descent rate. And after my first couple practice landings, I'm going to err on the side of being a little harder to hit the ground. Not too hard, but I'm really not trying to kiss it. Certainly not this time. We want to make contact. It's doing a good job maintaining speed. I don't have a lot of power in right now. And we're still just a touch high. Full flaps. Gear is down because it can't come up. My goal is to plant it firmly on the threshold. Holding the nose, holding the tail wheel off as we bleed some speed. Hold it until it doesn't want to fly anymore. Now I'm coming back. And see, it took right back off again. I mean, a very floaty aircraft. We're down. And now we can apply the brake, but yep, keep that back pressure. It's a little bouncy, but a good illustration of what's, uh, what we're trying to do with this airplane. Alright, so another happy landing here in Geneva. A little bumpy at the end, a little floaty, but 
I'd be interested to see how it behaves more heavily loaded down. It's, it is a very, it feels very light. Not necessarily maneuverable, but very light. And, uh, you know, I could see that being reasonable. So, it's an interesting challenge. It's a very different uh, beast to some of the other airplanes. I mean, the only thing kind of like it is the DC-6, which is almost too big and heavy to be really comparable. This is very light. Uh, but you got a lot of power. So, very fun, very fun. And, um, yeah, I think there's plenty to dig into, especially for your 15 US dollars or whatever it is in your particular location. But, yeah, it's a, a solid, really good-looking model. Um, and I think it has a lot to lot to master if you're looking for something maybe even a little bit more in-depth than some of the other airplanes. And uh, if you're looking for a prop liner, it's a really good option. So that's it. We'll probably see more of this around. But, uh, yeah, that's it for VFR today. If, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for different things we can do on the channel, drop it in the comment section below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. And, as always, this is VFR. Take it easy, y'all.